Welcome back to Teacher Talks. I'm Maria Keffler. And I'm Erin Brewer. And today we're going to talk about puberty blockers. Um, a lot of people have heard puberty blockers are safe, they're perfectly reversible, and they give a pause to children so that they can work through some issues. Do you want to talk a little bit about what puberty blockers actually are, Maria? I'm horrified every time I hear someone say, oh, it just puts a pause on puberty and it's fully reversible because they're not. Puberty blockers have been used for something called precocious puberty, which is a very rare disorder where children, maybe as young as five or six, start entering puberty. And the doctor will give them a puberty blocker to slow them down so that they're more on par with their peers. But puberty blockers now are being used in perfectly healthy children to prevent them from going through what is so-called the wrong kind of puberty. Um, so children don't pass through puberty as a boy if they think they really wanna be a girl or vice vice versa. These puberty blockers do some really awful things to kids' bodies. They delay brain development. They demineralize bones. They cause just a panoply of problems. And you have taught me some things about the history of some of these drugs, such as Lupron. And I'd love to hear you tell what this drug's history really is about. Yeah, it's, it's really quite shocking that uh, these drugs were used to chemically castrate sex offenders, and now in essence, they're chemically castrating children. Um, I want to just reiterate, these are inducing a developmental delay in otherwise healthy children. They're retarding the growth and development of these children, not just their bodies, so not just the physical changes of puberty, but also the developmental um, things that come along with puberty, which are huge. And so this is not something that can be reversed. It's not possible for a child to go back and have the appropriate puberty with their peers. And so it isn't a pause button. It's actually allowing that child to, first of all, believe there's something wrong with them because you wouldn't delay their puberty if there weren't something wrong with them. So you're reinforcing that misperception on, on their part that they're flawed and that the only way to deal with that is to medicalize. And second of all, the thing that's most shocking is that studies have shown that the, the most effective cure for gender dysphoria is to actually develop through puberty. So mm -hmm. going into puberty, there can be high rates of gender dysphoria and the vast majority of those cases are resolved during puberty. So puberty blockers effect, in effect block the cure for gender dysphoria. And I can't think of anything more harmful to a child than to, than to, act, than to medicalize with something that's gonna damage their body and to prevent the very thing that's going to cure them. We also know that Lupron has been used in the past for women with endometriosis. And there is currently a class action lawsuit by women who are harmed by Lupron. Women have been put into wheelchairs. They have um, headaches, migraines, joint pain. Um, it, it's horrific what's been done to these women. These were adult women and it can no longer be given to those women for endometriosis. So now, the pharmaceutical companies are looking for a new market for it, and they found it in children. And it is horrifying reading some of the accounts of people, of adults who have taken Lupron. Their teeth fall out, their joints deteriorate, they become wheelchair bound, as you mentioned. These are significant harms that are, that are happening. And the reason the activists say that, that there's you know, no harms that come from them is they're looking at the data from precocious puberty where we have children who are put on puberty blockers for a couple of years when they're um, children, you know, six or seven years old. Uh, what's happening now is that children are being put on puberty blockers for four, five, six, seven, eight, nine years, um, having their puberty blocked for all that time. And then it's being coupled with cross-sex hormones, which we'll talk about in a future video. This is not a pause button. This is, as Quentin Van Meter says, a fast forward button, um, pushing them to be medicalized for life and to embrace a trans identity rather than having that identity resolved. 